Welcome to Sleepy Eyes. I am your host, Varga. I take you on a journey in the dark of the night with warm tales. Take a moment to relax your body and mind with the current calmness. Breathe deeply, feel the energy inside, and let go of any tiredness. Put aside the past and focus on the peacefulness of the present moment. Recognize any tension in your body. Allow it to fade away and unwind. Discover your inner peace and simply unwind in the tranquility of now. Before going to sleep, prepare to read a story comfortably in this peaceful setting. Let the magic of words captivate you as you get lost in a tale or story. With the warmth from this peace and relaxation, your sleep will become even more serene. Close your eyes, embark on a journey with a touch of words. Let each word guide you a bit deeper toward the essence of your inner peace. Now, relax and enjoy the pleasure of getting lost in the enchanting world of the story before drifting into sleep. Sherlock Holmes Short Stories Writer Sir Arthur Conan Doyle The Three Garadevs Part 3 But in spite of our efforts to make no noise, Evans must have heard a slight sound as we passed over the old floorboards since his head suddenly came up out of the open space and he looked anxiously round the room. When he saw us, a look of anger, disappointment, and hatred appeared on his face. This gradually changed to a broad smile as he realized that two guns were aimed at his head. Well, well, he said coldly as he climbed up out of the hole. You have been too clever for me, Mr. Holmes. I suppose you realized from the first that I was telling lies. Well, sir, you have beaten me and... In a sudden movement, he pulled out a gun from an inside pocket and fired two shots. I felt a sudden hot tearing pain, as if a red-hot iron had been pressed against the top of my leg. There was a crash as Holmes's gun came down on Evans's head. I saw the man lying on the floor with blood running down his face, while Holmes searched him for other weapons. Then my friend's arms were round me and he was leading me to a chair. You're not hurt, Watson. Oh, please say that you're not hurt. I did not mind the wound. I would not have minded many wounds, because if I had not been hit, I should never have known the loyalty and love that Holmes felt for me, feelings which he almost always hid beneath his unemotional expression and manner. For a moment I saw tears in those clear, hard eyes of his, and the firm lips were shaking. I suddenly realized that Holmes had a great heart as well as a great mind. That moment of realization was my reward for years of service. It's nothing, Holmes. It's just a small wound. He had made a long tear in my trousers with his pocket knife. You are right, he cried. The skin is hardly broken. He turned to our prisoner and gave him a cold, hard look. It is a lucky thing for you. If you had killed Watson, you would not have got out of this room alive. Now, sir, what have you got to say? He had nothing to say. He only lay there and looked at us with a child's anger. I leaned on Holmes's arm, and together we looked down into the small room at the bottom of the hole in the floor. It was still lit by the lamp which Evans had taken down with him. We saw a lot of old machinery, great rolls of paper, a quantity of bottles, and tidily arranged on a small table, a number of neat little piles. A printing press for printing forged notes, said Holmes. Yes, sir, said our prisoner, struggling to his feet and then sinking into a chair. Prescott was the greatest forger there has ever been in London. That's his machine, and those piles on the table are two thousand of his banknotes. Each of them is worth a hundred pounds and is good enough to pass for real money. Help yourselves, gentlemen, and let me go. Let's make a deal. Holmes laughed. We don't do things like that in this country, Mr. Evans. You shot this man Prescott, didn't you? Yes, sir, and I was sent to prison for five years for doing it, though it was he who pulled out his gun first. Five years in prison, when I ought to have been given a reward by the king. 
There isn't a man living who could see the difference between a Prescott note and a Bank of England one, and if I hadn't killed him, he would have filled London with them. I was the only man in the world who knew where he made them. Can you blame me for wanting to get to the place? And when I found the old bone collector with the unusual name sitting right on top of it, of course I had to do what I could to get rid of him. Perhaps it would have been wiser simply to shoot him. It would have been very easy to do that, but I have a soft heart and can't begin shooting unless the other man has a gun too. But, Mr. Holmes, what have I done wrong? I haven't used that machinery down there. I haven't hurt old Mr. Garadeb. What crime are you charging me with? Only attempted murder, I think, said Holmes. But that isn't our job. It will be a matter for Scotland Yard. Just ring them up, Watson, would you please? The call won't be completely unexpected. So, those were the facts about Killer Evans and his invention of the three Garadebs. We heard later that our poor old friend Mr. Nathan Garadeb never got over the disappointment of not receiving any of the Garadeb money. He lost his mind and was taken away to a special hospital in Brixton. It was a happy day at Scotland Yard when the Prescott machinery was discovered. They knew that it existed, but after Prescott's death, they had never been able to find out where it was. Many high officials at the yard could now sleep more peacefully at night, and felt so grateful to Evans for leading them to Prescott's press that they would gladly have given him the reward of which he had spoken. But the judge took a less favorable view of the case, and Killer Evans was sent back to the prison which he had so recently left.